Well, good evening and welcome to this week's podcast for Platform Launchers. We're glad to have you with us. I'm John Sangi, and right now on the call here with me, I have members from our members club. And tonight we're talking about courses. And I'm kind of excited to be able to bring this content to you and to just discuss the, the idea of creating courses or, or how to create online courses that can be sold via your platform. This is something that I've been doing for a while, and it's something that I've been doing more and more lately. And uh, it, it's something that you, you might really want to consider as an ongoing piece of what you offer with your platform, uh, especially if you have some sort of specialized knowledge or some specialized uh, content or skill that you could pass along to other people. But but creating an online course is something absolutely worth doing. And I want to talk about how to do that and some ideas that I have for us that, that I hope will make that easy and, and somewhat practical. Now, when you're learning or looking to learn something new, where do you typically go? Are you somebody that, that tends to go to books? Do you go to YouTube? I think I go to YouTube quite a bit. Uh, do you go to blogs? Uh, I, I know plenty of people in my area here will take courses at our local community college. But if you're learning, to, looking to learn something new, what is your go-to location? All of those, by the way, are great options. But for many people, online courses are their go-to solution. And I have personally benefited from many online courses. Some were inexpensive. Others cost me thousands of dollars. I'm thinking about some of the courses. I could even tell you uh, of one course that I, I paid several thousand dollars for that I have not yet completed. And I keep telling myself, I've got to complete that course. I have not yet completed that one. And uh, lots of content in it, you know, and, um, and, and certainly something uh, useful. And uh, I, I've also been selling courses for the past few years and have received a lot of good feedback and I'll, I'll admit a, a good income from doing so. It's something that has absolutely been a worthwhile venture. So let's talk about a variety of things that go into this if you're going to add courses to your platform. Let's start with content. What content should you include in your course? So in my opinion, people purchase online courses for three specific reasons. Either they solve a problem or they teach a skill or they help the student earn an income. So there's usually one of those three involved in the process. They either solve a problem, they either teach a skill, or they help the student earn an income. And in many cases, a course can address all three needs as once. And I'm going to use one of my courses as a bit of an example for us this evening as we kind of talk about this. So an example I'll give you is my launch plan course. I have that available on my website. And that course meets all three of those needs. So it solves a problem, it teaches a skill, and it helps a student earn an income. And the way it works is this. I, I solve a problem by condensing the main content that people need to know when it comes to platform development into one curated course. And then I teach the skill of platform development by explaining how to utilize various forms of content creation and dissemination. And then I show students of the course how they can use those skills to earn a living. So it's a mixture of all of these things that I'm doing in that process. And if you know how to solve a specific problem, and if you know how to teach a skill, and if you know how to generate an income while you're doing that in a particular way, you might be halfway to creating your first course already. You might be further along than you even realize you are. Now let's talk about delivering that content. How should the content be delivered? Now, there are three primary ways that you can deliver an online course. You could deliver it through text, you can deliver it through audio, and you could deliver it through video, and many online courses use some element of all three to help teach students. Now, at present, my favorite manner to teach is to create videos that come with printable worksheets. That's typically what I do. I'll create a series of videos and I'll have a printable worksheet with blanks for you know some of the main concepts that are in it so that people could stay active and interactive as they're going through the content and, and hopefully stay more alert and even go through the process of, of writing things down so that their memory is, is triggered and, and jostled. And uh, most often when I'm teaching the video content, I do what I'm doing right now. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll create slides and I'll do a slide share that I've created about the content and then I'll share that way and I'll record it that way. And I actually think that that's a very easy way to both share and to learn information. 
because you're able to, to convey it a very specific way. It keeps you on task as far as the content and people can watch and listen at the same time. Uh, but I've also taken courses that were audio only with no worksheets. And that's something that from time to time I found beneficial. Uh, and I've also offered that from time to time in particular contexts where I've just had audio only courses where people could just listen to these things on the run. Now, rarely have I taken a course that was text only. In, in present day, when it comes to online platform development, most of the time it's either going to be video or audio with worksheets as a supplement, but very rare do you see a course presently that is text only. You do sometimes see it, but not very commonly. And I would suspect that that doesn't tend to be something that's quite as popular as when you have a video option that that comes with worksheets or a workbook that could go along with it. So that's typically how content is delivered. But the next question I often get from people is how long should a course be? You know, if I'm going to create a course, if I have an idea for a course, how long should that content be? Now, the truth is there's no set length for a course. It could be any length, but I'll, I'll tell you my preferences. And by the way, these aren't set in stone, but I actually do think this is a general rule of thumb that's probably useful. And if you're just starting out, I would encourage you just to maybe to start with the model that I'm suggesting here and then branch out from that if you want to try something different. But I generally prefer to offer something that's less than seven hours long. So if I create a course, I usually like it to be less than seven hours because I think if you make your course too long, you actually run the risk of, of users not completing it. And I mentioned just a few minutes ago that I paid a lot of money for a course uh, some time ago that I'm not yet finished with. And I'll admit to you, one of the reasons I'm not finished with it yet is it's just very lengthy. Now, it's good content. It's valuable content. I don't regret buying it, but it's lengthy. And so you do run the risk of users not completing it if you create something that's a little too long. But within the course, you typically have individual classes and individual classes within the course, I think, should be less than an hour long for each of those classes. Now, some would argue that an individual class should be around 20 minutes long. And uh, admittedly, that's a subjective call. Uh, I, I find that, it, that 20 minutes is fine. It's certainly a, a, a common number that's used. But when uh, you know, I'll use my launch plan course as an example. That course includes seven individual classes that are about 50 minutes long or less. And so th that makes the whole course a little less than seven hours in its total length. And it's plenty long enough to teach the skills that are necessary, but it doesn't end up going so long that a student doesn't finish the individual sessions. So I try and keep the, the individual sessions less than 50 minutes in length. And uh, like I said, there are seven of them in that course, and it, it, it seems to work well. The feedback that I'm getting is that people are finding it a helpful number. And in fact, uh, you know, a lot of times people say when you're when you're building these things the the right around, you know, anywhere from five to eight tends to be uh, just about the amount of individual classes that you would want to have in a course. And uh, I usually aim for right around seven. Now, let's talk about how much you charge for a course. Uh, I think you could charge anything that you think is fair for your course. I have certainly paid, you know, all over the map, things that were very inexpensive and things that were very expensive. But in my experience, people tend to value what they pay for. Now, I, sometimes I see people giving away courses for free. I don't have any problem with that. And, uh, you know, by all means, do that if you think that would be helpful to somebody. Uh, but but usually I think people tend to value what they pay for. And I'll tell you something that I've even noticed in my experience when I have been setting up courses, sometimes initially I might give away some of those courses for free in exchange for feedback. And what I've noticed is that many people that get a course for free, they never actually use the content, which is kind of interesting. You'd think that you're offering something for free, that they would value it. But what ends up happening is people tend to value what they pay for. So typically when I'm putting a course together, I charge somewhere between, you know, usually I charge about $49 for a mini course. And when I'm saying a, a mini course, I would say that's something that's maybe less than two hours. So usually I charge about $49 for that. And, uh, and usually I charge about $229 for a full length course. So $229 for something that's full length. But I also frequently offer coupons. 
to discount the price, to offer something at a, you know, just kind of a, a bonus value, especially when the course is new. So again, I'll use the launch plan course as an example here. I just made that available recently. And so I'm presently offering students a coupon for $100 off the regular price. In time, that will change. But when you're trying to build momentum for something, when you're offering something new, it's oftentimes highly valuable and useful for you to, to give people a discount and uh, to make it so that early adopters get the benefit of a lower price. I actually think if someone's going to take a risk on something that maybe doesn't have a lot of reviews yet or a lot of people that have gone through it yet, it's nice to offer those early adopters something at a lesser price. Now, when you put a course out there, when you create something, obviously, the fact that it's there is wonderful, but if nobody knows about it, nobody's going to use it. So I think the next logical question to ask is what is the best way to market a course? And the various elements of your platform will genuinely help you market your course. So if you're developing a robust online platform, what you can do is you can mention your course on your podcast, or you can mention your course in your blog, or you could mention your course in your newsletter, or even in the books that you write. In fact, I was listening to an audio book earlier today, and the, uh, the author of that book was referencing different course options that he had created throughout the years. So he was actually advertising his courses in his particular book. And so those are a variety of ways you could market, again, through a podcast, through your blog, through your newsletter, your books. All of those are ways that you could market your course and tell people that it exists. But I also think that it's, it's helpful when you have opportunities to interact with people that aren't your typical audience. And so marketing your course can also be done by doing podcast interviews. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about doing podcast interviews. We're going to be talking about that more and more. Uh, but that's a great way to be able to share almost anything that you're doing. And last year, when I was promoting a book, I did more podcast interviews than I have ever done. And it certainly helped promote that book. But if you've got a course, if you've got anything that you're looking to promote, Podcast interviews are a great way to do it. Another great option is speaking at conferences and speaking at events. Next month, I'm going to be speaking at PodFest. And while I'm speaking at PodFest, they told me earlier today that I'll have the opportunity to share a little bit about some of the things that I'm doing. They told me, you know, I can't directly sell from on stage, but I could certainly let people know about some of the things that I have available. And so marketing your course by doing interviews, marketing your course by speaking at conferences and events, very, very useful. But one other marketing option that's really helpful to consider is affiliate relationships. Now, all month long here in Platform Launchers, we've been talking about affiliate relationships and what that looks like and how to, sell up, uh, how to set up affiliate options on your website. And some of our members have really jumped headfirst into doing that. And basically, if you have a course that you would like to market through affiliate relationships, what you can do is you can offer a percentage of the sales price to affiliate partners who market your course to their audience. And this is a very common approach to course marketing. I've seen this done for years. This is something that I personally do. This is something that I don't think she'll mind me mentioning this. Jennifer Harshman, a member of Platform Launchers, I know that she does that with some of the courses that she has offered. Affiliate relationships can be a very great win-win type scenario where, where other people can share your content to their audience and in return, when people utilize your content or purchase your content, then you share an affiliate commission with the person that shared it, which creates incentive for them to share it even more. But those are some good ways to market a course. But here's another question I want to throw out there for us, because I hear this from time to time. Uh, and, and in fact, I recently listened to a, a, a great discussion on this, maybe a few months ago, but it was a, a, a debate between offering courses or offering a membership? And the question was, which is better? When you're trying to train people in a skill, or when you're trying to convey knowledge, or when you're trying to help people learn something new, which is a better way to do it? By offering a course or by offering a membership? Is one better than another? Well, it's probably not a big secret that I'm a big fan of memberships. That's why I started Platform Launchers. 
In fact, I think there's a lot you can learn from an ongoing training relationship. It's more interactive than a lot of other things. And I think a lot of inspiration comes to you when you just interact with a group of like-minded people in the context of community. So I think there's a huge benefit to memberships. And if I'm if I'm really honest with you, that's where I lean because I think that there's more that you can get over time. So, I mean, I'll give you an example right now, even as I'm sharing this information, they're, they're super polite and, and helpful as I record this portion here that we share publicly. But right now there's a group of people that are live on this call. And as soon as I, I uh, finish sharing a little bit about some of this information uh, about courses and, and some of the things I'm, I'm teaching here, we're going to discuss these things and we're going to be talking about these things. And that's one of the benefits of being part of a membership because you have that kind of interaction. But here's the other thing I've noticed. Not everybody's interested in being part of a membership group, but some people still want the content that's being taught within that membership group. And so for that reason, I actually think it's wise to make the core concepts that you're teaching. You know, if you have a membership, if you're trying to train people in a particular skill, if you have core concepts that you can boil down into, into what we were talking about, a success path a, uh, uh, or, or something that just helps people along a very logical series of steps, I think it's, it's wise to make that available in course form as well, because that gives people options. And it, I think it allows you to serve a wider audience in multiple ways. So, you know, there are people that will never be part of the Platform Launchers Members Club, but they might utilize a course. And if I don't have a course, then I'm not giving people an opportunity to learn some of these concepts in a context that they would take advantage of. And so I think, you know, when people talk about courses or memberships, which is better, I don't know that I even necessarily want to have to pick. I think my preference is really to just offer both and let the individual decide which is better for them because some people will say courses are definitely better for them. And others would say memberships are definitely better for them. So there's use in both. So let's just wrestle with this for a quick second here. Are you thinking about creating a course? Do you have a platform that you think a course would be a very useful thing to add to it? If you're thinking about creating a course, let me just encourage you to go for it. Because I, like I said, I have had a very positive experience with offering courses over the past few years. It's something that I'm grateful that I got involved in doing and uh, it's something that I plan to continue to do. And I'll say this, if you're new to course creation, don't overwhelm yourself. One of the things that I'd, I'd encourage you to do is maybe just start with a mini course. If this is a new concept for you, just start with a mini course. And maybe initially, just until you kind of get your, you know, they say like get your sea legs under you, right? Give it away for free for a few weeks. Let people you know have it for free or just allow your audience to download it for free for a few weeks. If you're new at this, just create a mini course, something that's a little less than two hours, give it away for free, and then get some feedback from early users and then refine it as necessary. And then when you feel like you have it refined a little bit better, then you can start charging. And one of the things that I think you'll realize is that you, if you have the heart of a teacher, right? That's something that, you know, when I think about myself, I think of myself as somebody that is, is someone that has a great desire to teach. I enjoy teaching. And if you have the heart of a teacher, I honestly think that, the, that you'll find this to be a very rewarding experience. It'll be rewarding for you as the teacher, also be rewarding for you as an entrepreneur in the sense that this can be a healthy form of income. But it's also a way that at the end of the day, you get to sit back and you get to think, did I serve someone effectively today? And if you're serving people, that tends to be a very gratifying thing. It's better to give than it is to receive. And at the end of the day, if you could look back and say, you know what, I actually helped somebody at the end of the day, that does tend to motivate you to do it even more. So again, if you're someone that has a heart of a teacher, I think online courses are a no brainer. And again, I'd encourage you to just start with a mini course. Don't make it complicated. Create a a course, it's just several sessions, takes less than two hours for someone to complete. Start off by giving it away for free for a few weeks. Once you get some feedback, you can refine it and then start charging and then build from there. Now, uh, before we finish our call here, before we finish our podcast episode, I should say, 
Uh, I just want to invite you, if you are someone who listens to our podcast and you'd ever like to join us here for one of our calls live and be part of the discussion that we have with our members club after we do this training, we'd love to invite you to be part of it. Just go to platformlaunchers.com. And in fact, we allow you to, to try it out for a couple of weeks for free. So if you want to test it out and look at, uh, we also have a, a pretty robust training vault at this point too. So not only do we have the live sessions, we typically meet on Tuesday evenings, but you will also find many, many hours of training content in video form on that website, in that training vault that's only available to members. And we'd encourage you to check that out as well. So I'm going to sign off for here. We hope to see you again next time. And uh, like I said, stop by to platformlaunchers.com to check out more.